Lord, we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lead us, guide us, fill us with your spirit, and we give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks in Christ's name. Amen. So we're working amen. through the gospel of Mark, and we're going to try it and amplify today. And it's kind of an interesting um, delineation in Mark. He has now gone from teaching the crowds to talking in parables. And uh, it, it's really a, a, a noticeable shift more in Mark than anywhere else. In the beginning, he was telling, you know, uh, he was doing regular teachings. And at this point and beyond, he's not really, really teaching the crowds. Um, he is telling parables, but he is um, teaching the Pharisees about their hypocrisy. So it's not totally um, parables. There is some interactions here that are um, more direct than a parable. Yeah. Yeah, it follows from a discussion we had yesterday where he concludes with a with a, a passage from actually multiple passages from the Old Testament. There were a couple in Isaiah. I think one of the, uh, I think we talked about Isaiah six nine uh, that people um, uh, that the, what he's speaking is actually hidden deliberately uh, from those who do not have ears to hear or eyes to see. Um, and it con concludes that, uh, in depending on the version you're reading, the really um, uh, kind of a challenging statement he says, in effect, he says outright, so that they might, so that they would not turn to him and be healed. And some versions say saved. Uh, it's almost like he's cutting them out. It's like, but you know, you can drill down on this in a number of different ways. Uh, and it's uh, going to be applicable uh, as background text for what's coming up here. Um, but the whole idea that some people just don't have either the ability or the will, and he doesn't really make a distinction, but they're just not going to hear it. They're just not going to hear it. Some, so many people are predisposed to uh, the word of God. Uh, you see it today, uh, simply point to a Bible, <laughs> hold one up, take a word out of it, and there's an immediate aversion to it for either they've been taught poorly uh, or, in, or in errancy, uh, or they just never had it. That's the, that's the thing. And it, in, it, it, in, I think in the case of the scripture we're talking about, uh, it sounds like they just never had the ability or the inclination to know it and to give them the truth um, as Jesus said, anybody who comes to me, um, I will in no wise cast out, yes. but if they are, if they are, uh, in a sense, healed or saved with the untruth, um, this is the same reason that he expelled, uh, Adam and Eve from the garden. He didn't want them eating from the tree of life in a fallen state, uh, because that's the way they'd stay. So it kind of seals their fate in a sense. Uh, but as I said, there's a lot of ways to, to drill down on this and interpret it. But um, uh, this is all about the word, getting the word to people, especially to those, uh, uh, the focus, of course, to get it to people who do have an ear to hear and who are interested in learning more. And as we'll see, they are rewarded with getting even more if they uh, respond in a um, uh, positive way. So picking okay. up in verse 21, we're talking let's on a new... Up, let's run on that thought for a second. So yeah, yeah. my understanding of salvation is the natural man does not understand the things of God. No one seeks God. No, not one. So then how does anybody get saved? And the answer is the word comes forth to them in power and might and whatever. And they can choose, they can choose to hear the word and let it apply in their lives or they can choose to not hear the word and just go really cold on it. And sometimes they hear the word, but the cares of life just swap out the word. So the word of God has the power to help people make the choice for Jesus or not. And so we spread the seed, not knowing, not knowing who's hard ground and who's, I mean, some of the people that got saved, 
you would never think, what, what are you doing, Lord? Why, why would you save that one and not save that one? And so the word of God goes forth. It takes, it takes uh, people either reject it or accept it. And then they're really all in, or they're just, uh, they're just, you know, uh, on a thrill ride with it. When I got saved, some of the people in my youth group said, loving Jesus is a much better high than any of the drugs. Sure. And a few months later, we didn't, see them. <laughs> we didn't see them because their motivation was, let me get a buzz on, on following Jesus. And that's not, that has to eventually change to, I serve Jesus for who he is, not what I get out of a deal. Yeah. Okay, that yeah, takes I, us that, to 21. That would, uh, that would parallel what uh, my experience was that um, I never gave up drugs. When I heard yeah. the word, I didn't have to. I just, I didn't even, I didn't even make an effort to forget about them. They just no longer had any appeal. It was like, uh, it was like, uh, can you remember when you gave up baby food? You probably not, because you didn't do it. You just outgrew it somehow. The, the appeal of real, real food just displaced uh, the uh, baby food and you moved on. And fortunately, I mean, I feel so blessed that that actually happens, a real deliverance. Uh, and 40 years later, I can testify that that desire has never come back. Amen. Um, uh, it's, uh, it, it, you know, and I, and I, I say this, frankly, with a timid heart, because I know that uh, so many people struggle with addictions. Uh, yeah. You know, people that consider themselves, they, they brand themselves, I'm an alcoholic. It's like they're branding themselves for the rest of their lives. They're going to have this struggle. And I, I feel for them. I believe the struggle is real. And I can't dismiss it with, oh, all you got to do is read the word. Uh, I can't say that because I, um, I've seen people who do read the word and still have a problem. So it's a, it's a difficult area. Anyway. Picking up in uh, verse 21? Yep. Here we go. Uh, this is a different parable, parable of the lamp and the light and so forth. Jesus, he said to them, a lamp is not brought in, in, uh, brought in to be put under a basket or under a bed, is it? It's not brought in to be put, on, it's brought in, I'm sorry, to be put on a lampstand, right? For nothing is hidden except to be revealed nor has anything been kept secret, but that it would become, it would come to light. That is uh, things hidden only temporarily until the appropriate time comes for them to be known. And this is how uh, the translators work in the notion that uh, this is why Jesus um, asked, uh, told people, asked them sternly, do not tell them anybody about this healing that I just gave you or this deliverance <laughs> and yet they spread it anyway uh, because there, this this whole thing is there's a timing issue there here that's that's a, a very important we've talked about that about the fulfillment of prophecies in due time and so forth picking up in verse 23 if anyone has ears to hear there's this phrase again let them hear and heed my words I like then he the said heed to them, there. the heed is a nice thing in there. Not only be hearers of the word, but be doers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse 24. This is, you mentioned, this is amplified. Mark 4, verse 24. Then he said to them, pay attention to what you hear by your own standard of measurement. That is to the extent that you study spiritual truth and apply godly wisdom it will be measured to you and you'll be given even greater ability to respond and more will be given to you besides for whoever has a teachable heart to him more understanding will be given and whoever does not have a yearning for the truth even what he has will be taken away from him ouch so i am really grateful for these couple years that we've spent every day opening the word of God, it has really taught me a lot more than I've, I've known in my whole life and ministry. Uh, every day we pray and we open the word and we have some discussion about it. And we, 
um, we walk away with a deeper understanding of who Jesus is, or at least um, that's what the plan is, and then and then having an ability to to walk it out, because obviously God teaches us not for our own selves, but so that we can teach others. So here, here he's uh, talking about a lamp, and and the challenge is that you get a lamp so your light shines. Um, you know, we have lighthouses on Cape Cod, and their idea, they function because their light tells people there's danger in front of them. Um, you can ignore the warning of a lighthouse at your own peril, because the lighthouse is there on purpose to tell you about the rocks or the shoals or whatever. And But if that lighthouse, if the guy decides, okay, I'm just going to cover the lake today, <laughs> then you're going to get all kinds of shipwrecks and stuff out there. So the lamp is designed to bring light. And if you try and hide that lamp, this is such a cool para paragraph that even little kids understand it. <laughs> we don't hide our light. This is a light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Um, we let our light just glow for the lost and broken world. Nothing's hidden that's going to be revealed. Nothing will be kept sacred that has not been brought to light. These things that are, hemp are only temporary. So we think about in this, um, more than ever, what was done in secret will come to light. Uh, something that you said 15 years ago, somebody can find it and replay it, and then everybody could know what, you're, what you said. Um, oops, I did that in secret. No. Please understand, everything you do online is not secret. However much protection you have, there's always somebody that can tap it. So, so live your life as if everybody's watching everything you're doing and saying. And <laughs> how amazing, how terrifying, how, how real that sentence is. Amen. Still, moving on to the parable of the seed. Verse 26, Mark 4, 26, amplified. Then he said, the kingdom of God is like a man who throws seed on the ground. Okay. And he goes to bed at night and gets up every day. And in the meantime, the seed sprouts and grows. How it, how it does this, he does not know. The earth produces crops by itself. First a blade, then the head of grain than the matured grain in the head. But when the crop ripens, he immediately puts in the sickle to reap because the time for the harvest has come. What an amazing sentence about if the farmer plants the seeds, we're back to seeds. And now the seeds growing and maturing and maturing, and now it's ripe and time for the harvest. And you just think how amazing the whole study of of plants and seeds and all of that stuff uh, i'm learning more about it because kathy's garden is going really good um and my my attempts at hydroponics did not go great went okay but now i'm figuring out okay what what do i need to do to make this seed better and then okay proper temperature ph those kind of things uh proper fertilization and then, so there's some work involved in it, um, in the terms of weeding, but all of a sudden it's harvest time. And the farmer knows when the harvest is ready and he harvests and he brings his grain to market or for his family, how amazing that is. And um, it's just mind boggling how the simple things of life are so amazingly complex. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mysterious. He makes a similar point in John 3 yes. uh, with the work of the Holy Spirit and how we can see the breeze in the treetops, but we can't see the Spirit itself. But it, it, but he does his thing and uh, he makes it, it, and things change. <laughs> yes. Sometimes that breeze is uh, cool and refreshing and sometimes it's a storm. Um, yes. But um, similarly, here we have a seed 
simply throw it on the ground, go away. And, uh, you know, uh, even in the worst of conditions, you'll see some of it in all likelihood. It may not be in this growing season. I, I remember planting some things. I, I planted one of those trumpet vines. It didn't come up for years. It didn't bloom for a long time. <laughs> but, but it's amazing it does come. And when it does come out, it, it, it's such a blessing. It's something about life coming forth and not being denied, you know. Yep. And the life of the kingdom coming forth here, uh, it's going to come forth, um, the, uh, the kingdom. And um, even in the face of, of all the resistance that uh, uh, can be thrown at it, uh, it, it's going to, and it will do it. And it's uh, according to God's timing, the way he has set the program. Um, and if we're, if we're smart enough, we go with the flow, so to speak. Exactly. And we watch the uh, watch the crop. We'll know when to put in the sickle and uh, be blessed by the uh, harvest. Amen. Lord, we thank you that you are Lord of the harvest and the season for harvest is upon us. We would ask that we would be obedient in casting out your seed, casting forth your seed, that we would be sharing your agape love with a desperate and dying world around us. Transform me, O oh Lord, so I can make a difference. We ask you a blessing on this Lord's Day, that souls will be saved, that bodies will be healed, that families be restored, that your glory would shine. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Yes, thank you again, Lord. Your word, your spirit, your instruction here. Uh, help us drill down on it and, and make it relevant. Help uh, by your spirit, make it relevant to us that uh, we get from it what you want us to have, that we may grow the way you want us to grow, that we may live lives that ultimately glorify you yeah. in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day, all. Enjoy the Lord's Day. Yes. See you. Huh.